Mark III model Mercedes B-Class represents the brand's third stab at what it calls its sports tourer. As for what exactly one of those might be, you can get a feel for the answer at first glance. Here's a car that's clearly more practical and versatile than a Golf or Focus-sized family hatch, but not as frumpy and high-set as a five-seater C-Max or scenic-like mid-sized MPV. It's the Mercedes take on compact, upwardly mobile motoring for a compact, upwardly mobile family. Let's say you need something sized like a compact family hatch, more versatile than a small SUV and sportier than a five-seat people carrier. It has to have a classy feel, plenty of technology and ideally an aspirational badge. But it's not such an unusual set of buying criteria and this car aims to satisfy that wish list precisely. Welcome to the third generation version of the Mercedes B-Class. Mercedes has Mercedes always instructed, has instructed us not instructed to call this an MPV, call MPV, although it sits closer it's to that category than any other. Than any other. Uh, the brand uh, prefers the, brand the prefers description the sports tourer. Sport tourer. Essentially, it's an A-class hatch A with more hatch accessible with dimensions more accessible for more dimensions active families. More active families. Now, that approach has that struck approach quite a chord with, with, with buyers, and by the time of the launch of this third B-class design in late 2018, this model line had clocked up over 1.5 million sales. It has changed quite a lot since the original Mark I was launched in 2005 with its heavily canted engine and curious double floor, primarily in 2012 when the second generation version gained conventional underpinnings and a more sporty demeanor. Uh, this third generation uh, this version third is generation also very different from what went before, primarily in terms of cabin design, design that's sophisticated design enough to make rivals look very outdated. Look very it incorporates outdated. a completely it new MBUX, Mercedes-Benz user, user experience, experience, user user experience user entertainment user setup, and a kind of fit and finish that aims to lift this car well clear of the kind of frumpier volume brand five-seat people carry that you could buy for considerably less. Uh, there's an all-new uh, range of efficient an petrol and diesel engines too. All of it sat on a fresh MFA2 platform, fresh which MFA2 makes possible the 30mm wheelbase increase needed to release extra cabin and luggage extra space. Extra Plus there's, there's autonomous driving Plus tech, a new era of headlamp technology, and another step forward in terms of safety provision. So the proposition is pretty complete, but then it has to be when your closest competition lies with a product as accomplished as the BMW 2 Series Active Tourer. Now Mercedes dismisses that model Mercedes by claiming that this B-Class is the only real sports tourer in the segment. Are they right? Let's find out. Right. Like its A-Class showroom stablemate, the B-Class has been getting progressively more sporty as model generations have come and gone, uh, which is another of the reasons why Mercedes wants to position it as a sports tourer rather than an MPV. Uh, do categorization semantics really matter? Well, only if they actually designate something tangibly different. Uh, if you move to this car after experiencing an ordinary volume brand C-Max or Scenic Class 5-seat MPV, and you might be minded to think that what's provided here actually is. Uh, the sharp way that this car turns into corners uh, and admirably resists body roll is certainly not very MPV-like, and it betters even the impressive drive dynamics of its closest rival, the BMW 2 Series Active Tourer. Unfortunately for Mercedes, though, many B-Class buyers will come to this car with no previous MPV experience whatsoever. Typical buyers of a B tend to be people who like the idea of an A-Class and who want something that size, but who need it to be rather more versatile. So they'll often have tried both models, in which case the switch to a B from an A will bring into sharp focus this sports tour model's slightly vaguer steering and also the higher seating position. Both cars, of course, get the same mechanical underpinnings, which uh, means the same mainstream engines beneath the bonnet, and the same policy of restricting the sophisticated multi-link 
rear suspension to the more powerful models in the range. In this case, that means those with engines of two litres in size. Lower down the lineup, the cruder torsion beam package that the volume variants have been fitted with, uh, that's been refined as much as the Mercedes development team could manage. The engineers helped there, no doubt, by the slightly lengthier and more sophisticated MFA2 chassis that this third generation B-Class now sits on. Now that's the platform that the brand plans to use for all its compact front-driven uh, designs going forward and it plays its part in allowing this model's ride quality to be a pretty good match for that uh, direct BMW rival model we just mentioned. Let's talk specifically about engines and those you get on the mainstream variants, most of which get engines developed by Mercedes in conjunction with its European alliance partner Renault. As before, there's a 1.5 litre diesel for the popular B180D derivative offering 116 HP and performance that sees 62 miles an hour from rest dispatched in 10.7 seconds on the way to 124 miles an hour. Your alternative to that model lies with a couple of 1.3 litre petrol units, either the 136 HP engine fitted to the base B180, of which the figures are 9 seconds and 132 miles an hour, or probably more likely the B200 variant, which offers 163 horsepower, hence a marginal improvement of those figures to 8.2 seconds and 139 miles an hour. That base petrol engine isn't in itself especially refined. Over 4,000 RPM, it's especially raucous. Uh, but everything surrounding it seems to have been very thoroughly developed indeed when it comes to noise suppression. Uh, the result is that this Mercedes is a really impressively quiet cruiser and far more suited to longer highway trips than you'd expect a car of this size to be. You can see why so many B-Class sales are made to customers downgrading from larger luxury models which also might explain why such a high proportion of models sold here are automatics. In this case, a smooth shifting 7G DCT auto transmission, which is the alternative to the six-speed manual at this level in the range. Uh, Mercedes says that it's improved the auto units, but it still has a tendency to occasionally kick down more gears than is absolutely necessary when all you've asked for is a mild degree of extra acceleration. Auto transmission is mandatory if you go for a B-Class petrol or diesel model uh, with a 2-litre engine and therefore the Suffler multi-link suspension setup we mentioned earlier. Both units are developed by Mercedes and each comes in two states of tune. Uh, for petrol people, there's a B220 formatic variant with 190 horsepower, which has to be had with four-wheel drive, and that's the only model arranged to be offered with all-wheel traction. It's a variant that you choose if you wanted to tow with your B-Class, and it makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.1 seconds on the way to 145 miles an hour. We can't really see why you'd want to go faster than that in this Mercedes, but if you do, there's also a front-driven B220 250 petrol variant using the same engine in a 224 HP state of tune and that improves those stats to 6.4 seconds and 155 miles an hour. Here though we're trying the 2 litre diesel power plant which is only offered in front driven form and which gets its own 8 speed 8G DCT auto gearbox. It really is an exceptionally quiet diesel unit and that extra top auto ratio makes the car feel a touch less ponderous as you scroll through the gears. Uh, today we're trying the B200D model, which offers 150 horsepower, puts out 320 newton meters of torque, and makes 62 miles an hour in 8.3 seconds on the way to 136 miles an hour. The alternative is the B220D, which gives you 190 HP with 400 newton meters of torque and improves the performance readings to 7.2 seconds and 145 mph. This B-Class, like the previous generation model, gets the Mercedes Dynamic Select driving mode system, although it's standard across the range this time. As usual, this is one of those setups which will appropriately tweak steering feel, throttle response, uh, and on the auto models, the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive uh, via three main options, comfort, eco, and sport. Now, unfortunately, Dynamic Select doesn't give you any kind of set-and-forget auto setting, but you do get to play with an almost infinitely 
configurable individual mode, which allows you to alter your own parameters. To suit the mood of the moment, this third generation B class gets a degree of autonomous driving technology, although only if you pay quite a lot extra for the optional driving assistance package. Uh, that will give you the brand's active distance assist distronic system. This is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and it works with the Mercedes active steering assist setup. For us, though, a preferential way of spending any extra cash would be to opt for the augmented reality navigation system, which overlays a live camera feed of the route ahead with things like uh, house numbers, direction arrows, road names, and other useful bits of information which will help you get to your destination. So there's less chance of unruly kids in the back there causing you to miss a crucial turn. It's another classy touch on a very classy kind of family car. You wouldn't immediately peg this car as any kind of MPV, and of course that is entirely intentional. Compact MPVs being about as popular as, as a of dose MPV, of flu of in some parts of Europe right now. But Mercedes did want to give this third generation B-Class model a little more of the space and practicality that you get from the C-Max and Scenic sector, which is why it's 26 millimeters longer and 10 millimeters wider than its predecessor. Yet at the same time, in justification of that sports tourer tag, it's it's also four millimeters lower and it boasts easily the sleekest drag factor in the segment, 0.25 CD. Much of that comes courtesy of a frontal area that's much reduced in size, the look of which varies quite a lot if you stretch up to the AMG line trim level we have here. That gets you a smarter single louvre diamond style grill embellished by these glistening chrome pins and corner air intakes that feature uh, these twin ribbing strakes. It all creates a level of overtaking presence that's a long way from the kind of mundane statement that you'd make at the wheel of a typical volume branded people mover in this class. Uh, the lower bonnet flows into these narrower, meaner headlamps with torch-like LED daytime running light strips. Uh, full LED beams are standard or you can specify multi-beam LED headlamps that continually adapt themselves to road conditions and other motorists. Now the profile is characterized by the way this model is visually extended by its longer wheelbase and this sharp mid-level character line that's been pitched slightly lower this time around and runs from nose to tail directly below the glass house. Uh, the bonnet slopes down more heavily than it did with the previous car and there's this lower shaping line that gives the flank some shape. This flows between wheel arches that have been enlarged so as to house the bigger wheels that are very much in vogue right now. Uh, the sizes available range from 16 to 19 inches. We have the 18 inch Inch AMG rims right here now. that you'd probably uh, ideally want. At the rear, this B-Class now has a wider stance due to its more heavily waisted look, these broader two-piece LED tail lamps the rear, and the wider spacing of these slim rear reflectors. Now these are integrated dual-like into the smarter modular two-section bumper which has a diffuser-style lower section. Further up, gloss black lateral spoilers on either side of the rear window flow into the roof spoiler. The concealed the lower lip of which allows for a particularly long wiper blade. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. In this case, the stiff, sophisticated MFA2 compact car platform, which made its debut with the current A-Class and which will in future be used in all of Mercedes' various uh, smaller models, including the next generation GLA SUV. Okay, time to check out the part of this car which Mercedes promised will really sell it to you, the interior. And in the past, the brand has often okay, struggled to build compact, car, affordable cars that feel like, really well, that feel like a Mercedes. Interior. Is and this one past, different? Often struggled to build compact, affordable cars that feel like, Absolutely. Well, that in fact, like it'll be like Mercedes. nothing else Is you've ever different? previously sat in when it comes to the car of this sort. As always with the B-Class, nearly all Absolutely. the fixtures and fittings fact, are shared like with its A-Class showroom stablemate, which these days is a very good thing. Although a fundamental difference here is the way that your driving position is elevated by 90 millimeters, which uh, detracts from the sporty driving stance, but gives you a much better all-round 
around for you. Uh, you're going to need to like silver turbine styled air vents because, the because there are no fewer than five of those festooning this rather view. uniquely designed uh, like avant garde dash. Uh, the key thing that you'll notice though, if you haven't previously driven uh, a modern Mercedes compact model, is the lack of the kind of cowled instrument binnacle that almost every other car on the market has to have. As a result, the wing shaped main body of the dashboard extends from one side of the cabin right across to the other with no visual discontinuity. Main Instead, two elongated square color TFT screens are provided, right one for the center dash the entertainment system no and the other for the dials you view through the sophisticated three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. These monitors, uh, which in a B-class are designed as a single unit, are both seven inches in size as standard, but to get the full effect of the changes that have been made here, you'll need to pay more. An executive pack upgrades the central entertainment display screen size to 10.25 inches, but you'd ideally want to stretch to a premium pack which will do the same for the instrument binnacle display too. With the two larger screens in place as they are here you really get the full intended widescreen effect. You can control quite a few of the functions offered by this double screen arrangement via these neat little steering wheel touch pads. Using these you can customize the instrument display ahead of you via three settings, normal classic, a yellow themed sport layout and a darker, minimalistic, understated setup. Either way, in between the virtual dials, you can tailor the central part of this screen to view driving assistance, phone, navigation, a trip computer, radio or media information. You can tailor the there are some really sophisticated graphics in play system. here and you um, really get to see what the uh, Mercedes designers can do with them on this center dash infotainment monitor. Now this really is your portal for viewing what is supposed to be really one of this car's technological highlights. It's new MBUX and that's Mercedes-Benz user experience multimedia system. Uh, that comes as standard regardless of screen size. Uh, it's supposed to take in-car connectivity to a whole new level that's a boast that's slightly undermined by the setup's failure to include standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Still, you do get Bluetooth, uh, a DAB tuner, voice activation and hard disk SatNav 2 as part of a package that can be optionally upgraded to advanced navigation status with what uh, Mercedes calls augmented reality technology. Now this is effectively uh, a live camera feed of the road ahead overlaid with house numbers, what, uh, road names, uh, direction arrows, and reality. other useful bits of now information, which will uh, just uh, help you to find your way more easily. Overlaid now, some aspects of the MBUX setup we really like. The touchpad down here at the base of the center stack that you can use to control it is superb with easy functionality, helped by these surrounding shortcut buttons for navigation, radio, phone, and vehicle features. Now, a note to Lexus uh, if you want to give customers touchpad controllers, this is how you do it. What's not quite so good is the system's so called Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality, uh, the brand name Desi designates the greeting that you'll need to address the screen in order to get the uh, speech recognition setup working. Sometimes uh, you'll think it's absolutely brilliant, but all too often, if it responds at all, it either trips up over similar words, um, it doesn't appear to know the difference between new and nude, for example, or it'll just chime in when you don't want it to, when you're mentioning the word Mercedes in casual conversation, for example. Um, one test uh, tells a story of finally in frustration hurling an expletive at the MBUX setup Mercedes which heard it as fan off and then shut down um, the ventilation one system. Test, uh, tells a story Enough on connectivity, uh, what else do you need to know about this cabin? Well it certainly feels MBUX very setup, premium in a way that the cabin of a rival BMW 2 Series Active Tourer can't quite match. On, on close inspection uh, though the quality of some of the cabin? fittings well, isn't quite as deeply impressive as it is with that competing Munich model. The air events, for example, don't feel to the touch as great as they look to the eye. Uh, the quality of plastic used in areas like the door pulls and the glove box isn't of the best. And if you happen to have forked out over £30,000 for an upper spec version of this car, uh, the rather flimsy steering column stalks that it shares with the Mercedes Sprinter van 
may not be quite the kind of thing you will have been expecting. Overall though, this is a very polished piece of interior design and it looks particularly good in this top AMG line spec with its Artico leather sports seats, aluminium pedals and red stitched Dynamica suede style trim. Uh, the shiny piano black finish that decorates the center stack looks nice too. Well, it, it does until it inevitably becomes decorated with sticky fingerprints. And if you've got the 64 color ambient lighting package, you'll be able to play with cabin illumination to your heart's content. Inevitably what else? Uh, well, getting comfortable on the flatter, more supportive seats is easy, thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustment. Uh, it is a pity, though, that you don't get lumbar adjustment as standard. That's only included as part of the electric seat option. And the taller, squarer windows bring a vast improvement in all-round manoeuvring visibility in comparison to the previous model. Um, and that's something that's embellished by the standard inclusion of a rear-view camera across the range. Um, even cabin storage is beautifully done. The butterfly lidded box between the seats here, for example, or this compartment down here at the bottom of the center stack with its twin cup holders, its storage cubby, and lovely concertinery top. Now, both these storage areas have USB ports, or what look like USB ports, actually, and annoyingly, they can only be used if your lead has a USB C connector, which uh, actually Mercedes supplies a neat little uh, adapter for. Uh, there's also a reasonably sized glove box, uh, there are door pockets with recesses for bottles and there's an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Getting out, you're reminded uh, just how much easier this sports tour is to access than the lower slung A-Class. Uh, now let's move to the rear seat. Unlike rivals in the segment, there's no option here of a slightly lengthier body style to incorporate a third seating row, but Mercedes has added 30 millimeters of extra wheelbase between the axles uh, in order to improve a lot of those in the, the second row. No uh, you'd think that might make quite a difference for rear seat folk. Actually, it doesn't. Not with the car specified in this conventional form the anyway. Uh, there's uh, no more legroom than there was with the previous generation model. Although, to be fair, provision for that isn't too bad. A six foot three inch driver could sit behind his or herself, helped by the fact that the sportier roofline hasn't impacted on headroom. Actually, there's eight millimeters more of it. Uh, Mercedes claims to have sculpted the center transmission tunnel to make it easier for a third adult to be accommodated in the middle, but uh, that feature is still quite prominent, and the center part of the rear bench um, isn't especially comfortable. What will make a huge difference, though, is if you swap out the standard fixed rear bench that we've got here for the optional sliding back seat, which can be pushed uh, fore and aft over a range of 14 centimeters. With that feature fitted, you really get the benefit of that extra wheelbase length. And with the base in its rearmost position, you'd enjoy legroom almost comparable to what you get in the brand's S-Class luxury saloon. As part of this option, uh, the rear backrest can be reclined for greater comfort on longer journeys too. Um, as in the front, perceived quality looks brilliant, but on closer inspection isn't always quite what it could be. Uh, but maybe that is unfair. Uh, Mercedes has, after all, tried hard here with smart little too. touches like um, these the twin front, turbine style vents. Uh, there's a pull-out center console compartment with uh, storage and twin uh, USB points, plus useful seat back nets and this uh, smartly stitched smart center armrest like uh, complete with extra pop-out cup holders. Uh, there's a pull-out center console Let's finish with a look at the boot. Uh, now Mercedes has had to copy BMW and provide an electrically powered tailgate as standard in this segment. And once it's open, well, we'd expected that that extra body length and wheelbase enlargement this time around might have slightly increased cargo capacity. Actually, the 455 litre total figure is 33 litres less than B-Class buyers were offered with the previous generation model. And perhaps more significantly, it's 13 litres less than you'll get in this car's BMW 2 Series Active Tourer arch rival. Of course, it all changes if you paid extra for the sliding rear bench you just mentioned. If your B-Class has that and you're able to slide it right forward, then as much as 705 litres of total boot capacity can be freed up before you have to start folding seats. Plus, as we referenced before, as part of that package, you'll be able to change the um, angle of the backrest. Uh, if you make it more vertical, then that can make all the difference when it comes to uh, cramming in things like awkwardly shaped suitcases.
floor as part of that package. The useful adjustable um, height boot floor, which is missing uh, in this car's uh, A-Class showroom stable mate, is present and correct here. To, uh, Unfortunately, though, as with that car, you are denied any sort of spare wheel, although uh, that does at least free up a bit of extra space beneath the boot floor. Getting stuff in is aided by the wide boot aperture and by the low loading lip. Twin bag hooks are provided, as is a useful netted storage compartment in the left-hand cargo sidewall. Plus, you get the usual tie-down hooks. Getting stuff in what else? Oh, well, if you need space for longer items, but you still need to carry rear-seated passengers, the 40-20-40 split that this rear backrest offers in its standard form will be a boon. Bear in mind, if you go for that seat sliding option we were just talking about, though, that setup is replaced by a less flexible 60-40 split. Uh, fold down the seats completely, and 1,540 litres of total capacity can be freed up. That's 7 litres less than the previous generation model, and 7 20 litres less than you'll get in that BMW competitor, but for reference, it's 330 litres more than you'll get in an A-Class. If you occasionally need to carry really lengthy items like surfboards, then your dealer can offer you the option of a fold forward front passenger seat. You won't be expecting this B-Class to be priced alongside similarly shaped volume brand mid-sized MPVs like the Citroen C4 Space Tourer and the Ford C-Max, and it isn't. But if you were looking at an upper spec version of a contender like that, uh, then this Mercedes could still appeal. From launch, prices were pitched in the 25,500 to 33,000 pound bracket, and there are two trim levels available, Sport and AMG line, with an emphasis on the latter spec level further up the range. The base B180 1.3 litre, 136 horsepower petrol model is the cheapest way into B-Class motoring, like the B200, which gets the 163 horsepower version of that same engine. It can be had either with manual transmission or for around £1,600 more with the 7-speed 7G DCT automatic gearbox that most B-Class buyers will want. Uh, the rest of the petrol range and the whole of the diesel range is fundamentally based around automatics. Most B-Class buyers will be stretching up to and just beyond the 28,000 pound price point to get wider options within the lineup. Uh, for that kind of money, you get an automatic B class powered either by the B200 petrol units or if you want diesel, the 1.5 litre 116 HP black pump fuel power plant of the B180D. Uh, that's a variant that's usually been the best seller in the lineup. Uh, the two litre models are rarer, there are several. Uh, on the petrol side, there's a B220 variant with 190 horsepower, which only comes with formatic four-wheel drive. That's the only B-Class model available with all-wheel uh, traction. Or you could opt for a B250 derivative where the same engine is tuned to 224 HP. As for the two-litre diesels, which come only with an eight-speed 8G DCT auto box, well, there's the B200D with 150 horsepower, and that's the variant we've chosen to test here, plus the B220D with 190 horsepower, and that's your lot. Uh, the more powerfully engined Mercedes-AMG variants you get with the equivalent a class don't really suit the well, sensible B class vibe. Now, before we get into rivals from other brands, let's look at this pricing from a Mercedes perspective. Now, if the need for something slightly more spacious and versatile is seeing you graduate up from an A class hatch, uh, then you might want to know exactly what the premium is likely to be. Well, the size of that price jump is slightly masked by the fact that the A class is available with a base SE level of trim, uh, which at launch wasn't available to B-Class customers. Um, if though you uh, instead match equivalently engined Sport and AMG line auto variants against each other, then you'll find that the price difference to go from A to B is only around £800. Uh, which at launch now, when it comes to pitching this B-Class against five-seat MPV um, rivals from other brands, uh, one competitor stands out, and that's primarily because it's the only other model, other model in the segment with a premium other, badge, BMW's 2 Series Active to Tourer. To now, the Munich model will cost you almost exactly the same as a B, which surely now, isn't coincidental. Uh, this Mercedes is fractionally more economical, and it's more high-tech feeling inside. The BMW is a much older design, it's slightly sharper to drive, and it has a fractionally bigger boot, now, but basically, as ever, your choice exactly between the, the two cars will come down to personal preference. 
Uh, this Mercedes the only is other five-seat MPV competitors in a segment that these size, days is much BMW reduced in size are from volume brands, uh, equivalently drive, engined versions uh, of the Citroen C4 boot, Space Tourer, the Renault Scenic, ever, uh, the Ford C-Max or the Volkswagen Golf SV would all probably save you £3,000 or more over this Mercedes. And even the seven-seat versions of the Citroen, the Renault or the Ford would save you around £1,500 over a B-Class in equivalent form. If, though, you were to match this Mercedes model's level of spec with those rival volume brand models, uh, then the differences would probably be a little less than that. And of course, with a B-Class, you'll get far more of your original purchase price back at resale time. If having considered all of that, you conclude it is a B-Class that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how well equipped the company's compact MPV really is these days. So let's take a look at that now, starting with the standard sport trim level, which is available to buyers of the B180 and the B200 and to purchases of the B180D and this B200D. Even at this point in the range, you're made to feel reasonably special. Uh, there are 17-inch, 10-spoke alloy wheels, um, a powered, easy-pack tailgate and full LED headlights and LED taillights. Inside, where the upholstery is trimmed in a combination of fabric and Artico man-made leather, you get two-zone thermotronic climate control and a multifunction leather stitch sport steering wheel. Uh, you also get cruise control with a speed limiter, uh, a reversing camera and the dynamic select driving mode system which allows you to adjust the throttle response, uh, the steering feel and the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. The real cabin talking point though is the new MBUX infotainment system which is controlled by two 7 inch screens, one for the instrument cluster and another in the centre of the dash. Uh, the MBUX system doesn't give you smartphone mirroring as standard but it does include navigation, uh, DAB radio, Bluetooth, voice activation and a live traffic information feature which is free for the first three years of ownership. Uh, talking of information technology, like most premium brands, Mercedes has developed systems that allow you to monitor many aspects of your vehicle from your smartphone. Every B-Class model comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect standard services package which works via a free app. And this reminds you when a service is due and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and Tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery, and it automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. It can even track the time on your parking meter and send you an alert when it's about to expire. I do, though, you want to upgrade your B-Class to the plushest AMG line trim that we have here that makes the car feel significantly more special. Now, this variant is visually differentiated from the sport trimmed model by this diamond-style single louver radiator grille, which is embellished by chrome pins. At this level in the range, the hand of Mercedes Sporting Division has been on the smarter five-spoke 18-inch alloy wheels, the body styling kit, and even the floor mats. Uh, there are also brake calipers with Mercedes-Benz lettering, a sports pedal set, and to lift the interior ambiance, a flat-bottom steering wheel and sports seats trimmed in black Artico leather and Dynamica microfiber. On to options. Now, the key thing that we'd point you towards here is the optional sliding rear seat which can slide back and forth over a range of 14 centimeters and can vary boot space between 455 and 705 liters plus it gives you a backrest that can be adjusted more vertically for awkward loads bear in mind though if you go for that more versatile rear seat you'll have to swap out the versatile 40 20 40 split rear seat back for a less flexible 60 40 split arrangement if you occasionally carry really long loads you might also want to consider the optional fold forward front passenger Seat. Otherwise, uh, Otherwise uh, refreshingly uh, and surprisingly for a Mercedes, there aren't many options. Seat. Well, at least there weren't at the launch of this car. Uh, you can pay extra for metallic paint, but that's about it. Uh, beyond that, the focus is on a series of optional packs, and you're going to need to consider these if you want the desirable full-width double-screen cabin layout that we have here, which makes the interior of this car seem so futuristic. Now, your starting point is the executive equipment line and that's, and that's a pack it. that upgrades uh, the, that, the central infotainment screen to 10.25 inches and also adds heated front seats, power folding mirrors, an auto dipping rear view mirror and an active parking assist here, system with all-round parking sensors which will steer you into spaces. Now your starting point 
Uh, a better alternative to the executive pack, if you can afford a little more and you've avoided entry-level trim, is the premium equipment line pack that we have fitted here. This gives you all the executive pack features, but adds a whole series of others, primarily the 10.25-inch instrument cluster, which completes that full-width double screen cabin uh, layout that we just mentioned. Uh, other premium pack inclusions run to keyless entry, an upgraded 225 watt sound system, illuminated door sills, and a 64 color ambient lighting package. If you want more, the premium plus equipment line pack also includes more sophisticated multi-beam LED headlamps which adapt themselves to road conditions and to other motorists. Uh, also a panoramic glass roof and memory settings for the powered front seats. Uh, what else? Well, it's disappointing that you have to pay extra for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, which allows you to replicate your handset's display onto the center dash screen and continue to use all your favorite apps. Uh, that comes as part of the advanced connectivity package, which also includes wireless phone charging and a digital vehicle key, uh, which will allow you to unlock your car with your phone. Uh, we'd also be very tempted by the optional advanced navigation navigation package. Now this delivers something that uh, Mercedes calls augmented reality navigation. That is effectively a live camera feed of the road ahead overlaid with house numbers, uh, road names, direction arrows and other useful bits of journeying information that will help you find your way. Uh, the pack also includes traffic sign assist which pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays on the dash. Uh, bear in mind that unless you want your B-Class in the only two paint colours that come as standard, polar white or Jupiter red, uh, you'll need, as we mentioned earlier, to be paying your dealer more for your choice between the three available metallic shades, uh, iridium silver, denim blue, or as in this case, uh, mountain grey. Now, on to safety. This car was one of the first Mercedes models to be engineered at the brand's new technology center for vehicle safety in Sindelfingen, uh, which develops vehicle structures based on findings from research into real accidents. Every single body shell component of this MPV was developed according to the loads and stresses encountered in real world crashes uh, with respect to material thickness, sheet steel quality, and joining technology. And of course, this B class includes all the usual camera driven kit. Based on findings from As standard, you get accidents. active brake assist, Every autonomous braking. This is one of those setups that MPB scans the road ahead as you drive, warns you of potential accident hazards, and is also crashes, capable of uh, autonomously braking the car if you don't thickness, respond to the warnings, quality, or perhaps if you aren't able to. Uh, now, testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose to tail accidents and will decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. In addition, a Mercedes includes another important camera safety feature, and that's attention assist. Now this monitors your driving reactions to detect drowsiness, plus the Mercedes Me Connect app that we mentioned earlier includes an e-call emergency call system. Now that will automatically alert the emergency services to your exact location should the airbags be deployed in an accident. Uh, more familiar standard safety stuff includes ABS brakes that automatically prime themselves in wet weather and which flash the rear lights in emergency stops to warn following motorists. Plus there's an ESP stability control system with acceleration skid control and curved dynamic assist for extra cornering traction. If all that's not enough to keep you out of the hedge, uh, then there are also twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, anti-grip lash head restraints, ice fix child seat fastenings, a uh, deformable steering column, crash responsive emergency lighting and the pedestrian friendly bonnet. Plus you get a tyre pressure monitoring system and hill start assist to stop you from rolling backwards on uphill junctions. If you want to go further and get some of the choicest elements of Mercedes camera driven safety tech, you'll need to budget an extra £1,700 for the optional driving assistance package, which includes 10 key extra features and also gives this car limited autonomous driving capability. Let's talk you through all that. Uh, evasive steering assist can support you in making 
making evasive maneuvers if a pedestrian if or a cyclist suddenly appears in your path. Route-based speed adjustment works with GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts and junctions. Uh, active blind spot assist, this can warn you of vehicles in your blind spot during a lane change and it can help to avoid a collision by means of one-sided braking intervention. If a lane change on the highway is safe to make, then this car can deal with it for you using an active lane change assist feature which only requires you to activate the direction indicator. Uh, there is braking stuff too, of course, the active braking assist with cross traffic function and now that can help to avoid accidents with vehicles ahead, with crossing traffic and also with pedestrians and or mitigate their consequences. And active emergency stop assist can bring the car to a safe controlled stop if you become incapacitated. Uh, there's also the clever pre-safe plus anticipatory system which can sense a rear end collision fractions of a second before it happens and so before impact we'll be able to automatically pre-tension the seat belts, close the windows and if fitted position the powered sunroof and the electric seats to provide for optimum crash survival. As we mentioned earlier the driving assistance package also includes limited autonomous driving capability to suit the mood of the moment. Uh, now that comes courtesy of the pack's active distance assist distronic system uh, which is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and which works with the Mercedes active steering assist setup. Uh, now the distronic feature is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control which automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can if necessary remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Active steering assist keeps you in the center of your designated lane and it will if needed apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you ought to be. Uh, the whole setup also works with active speed limit assist which ensures that uh, detected speed limits are automatically adopted as the speed set for the active distance assist distronic system. It's all very reassuring. The model designations of this third generation B-Class may be very similar to those of the previous model, but the Euro 60 temp engine technology that they reference has moved on quite a bit. It's difficult to say by just how much as the industry measuring standard changed to a stricter WLTP or world harmonized light vehicle test procedure system in 2018. The consumption figures we'll give you have been measured to that cycle, but at the time of this test in the spring of 2019, uh, Mercedes was still quoting emissions ratings compiled to the old NEDC, New European Driving Cycle Standard, since uh, British taxation bans hadn't then yet switched to figures using the new system of measurement. If you want the headlines here, let's tell you that the fuel and CO2 readings are factionally ahead of this car's most direct BMW 2 Series Active Tourer arch rival, possibly because this Mercedes is more aerodynamic. Uh, its 0.25 CD drag factor is exceptionally sleek for a family car of this sort. Uh, to give you an example of how that pans out, let's take the popular 1.5 litre B180D diesel variant, and that manages up to 60.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 120. 12 grams per kilometer. That's in the automatic guise that most will want. And you'll find that across the range, the figures you'll get from variants fitted with the auto box are close to 10% better than those you get from a manual model. Uh, you have to have the auto uh, unique eight speeder if you opt for the two liter diesel engine we've been trying today. Uh, this B200D manages up to 57.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 115 grams per kilometer of CO2, while the B220D returns up to 56.5 mpg and 116 grams per kilometer. When it comes to petrol B-Class variants, specifically the 1.3 litre B180 and the B200 derivatives that will sell in the highest numbers, uh, you'll find that this Mercedes can pretty much replicate the returns of directly comparable BMW 2 Series Active Tourer 118i and 120i models. Again, you'll want the specifics, uh, which are that using this high compression four-cylinder engine engine, uh, B180 auto derivative can manage up to 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle 
and up to 125 grams per kilometer of CO2. And now we'd expected that the B200 variant might do slightly better than that despite its greater power output, thanks to the incorporation of cylinder deactivation technology, which disables two of the engine's four cylinders at mid to low throttle speeds. As it is, uh, an auto B200 can potentially return 46.3 mpg and 126 grams per kilometer. Finally, we'll see give you the figures for the auto only two litre B class petrol models. The B220 formatic manages up to 38.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 153 grams per kilometer of CO2. The rare B250, meanwhile, delivers up to 40.4 mpg and 143 grams per kilometer. Now, Mercedes doesn't offer the kind of plug in hybrid petrol electric engine that you can have on that rival 2 Series active tourer, but we'd uh, expect the brand to want to replicate the full battery powered Tesla inspired electric drive B class model that was offered by the previous generation version of this car. Uh, at the time of this test, plans for a derivative like that had yet to be confirmed though. Outside of electrification, all the usual elements of energy saving engineering have been uh, brought into play here. So things like low rolling resistance tires, brake energy regeneration, electric power steering, an adjustable radiator shutter, and intelligent management of engine ancillaries like the alternator, the oil feed, and the water pump. As you'd expect, the diesels use the usual AdBlue technology. Uh, the tank for the AdBlue liquid has its own filler neck next to the fuel filler, and it's large, 23.8 litres in size, so uh, it ensures for long refilling intervals. As you expect, you get an eco start-stop function that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're waiting in the lights or stuck in traffic. Uh, in addition, the auto gearboxes feature a sailing function, which disconnects the engine drive the cruise for greater efficiency. Even the full LED the headlights help here, uh, using up to 70% less energy than traditional halogen lamps. To get anywhere near the quoted official figures on a regular basis, you'll have to make sure that you're regularly using your B-Class in its dynamic select, driving mode system's most frugal eco setting. Now this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve, and it also slightly restricts the output of the seat heating, the heated rear window, and the climate control system. Plus, it will automatically activate that sailing feature for the automatic gearbox that we were just talking about. A fuel consumption section on the central MBUX display gives you graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum frugality over different recent time periods. And a vehicle screen shows the percentage of gas, that means throttle or brake pressure that you're using at any given time. Uh, now we particularly like the eco display which can show on the instrument binnacle, which grades you on acceleration, constant motion, and the amount of fuel-free coasting that you've done. This graphic is also incorporated into a larger efficiency briefing layout, which also shows driving range and regenerative braking charge. What else? Uh, well, residuals will be strong and as good, if not slightly better, than those you get from that rival BMW 2 Series Active Tourer, and of course, uh, considerably better than comparable volume brand C-Max and Scenic Segment rival MPVs. We would normally place a caveat here to the effect that going mad on the options list would put a bit of a dent in expected depreciation, but in this case, it's likely that buyers will be actively seeking models upgraded with those extra, larger, but pricey twin cabin display screens. Um, what about insurance? Well, you can insure your car through Mercedes, although most company drivers, of course, will have this element included in their lease cost. Uh, if you do, though, pay the insurance on your car, you might want to know that the volume B180D diesel uh, requires group 19 or 20 insurance. That depends on the spec that you go for. Uh, this B200D sits in group 25 or 26, and for the B220D, uh, it's group 29 or 30. For the petrol models, the base B180 is rated at group 22 or 23, and the B200, that's rated at group 25 or 26. 
uh, or B class models that cost £140 a year to tax. But go easy on the options list if you want to avoid cresting the £40,000 price barrier, which would result in an annual uh, £310 surcharge. As you expect, the Mercedes Aftercare package is comprehensive with a three year unlimited mileage warranty, which matches BMW. This is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. Um, ah, yes, maintenance. Well, as usual with one of the Stuttgart brand's models, there's an Assist Plus dashboard service indicator, uh, and that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit's due. Uh, for reference, servicing is usually required every 15,500 miles or every year, whichever comes around first. Fixed price servicing is available across the range, and most buyers opt for the Mercedes service care plan, which could cost you as little as about £28 a month based either on a two-service, two-year deal, uh, three years with three services, or four years with four services. Uh, whatever package you opt for, it'll cover the cost of all recommended service items uh, like brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters, and screen wash. It's also worth mentioning that the optional Mercedes Me Connect services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability, which enables your B-Class to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. Ferrying the family around isn't something most of us especially look forward to doing, but Mercedes doesn't see why it shouldn't be. In this third generation B class, Stuttgart has made great strides in engine efficiency, safety, and high tech driving aids. Its real importance, though, is improving its make capable of delivering Mercedes quality to the mainstream. Not everyone, of course, gets what this car is trying to be. Its detractors painted as neither one thing nor the other. Not as sporty as an A-Class, nor practical enough to be an MPV. And sure enough, if your priorities lie at either end of these two extremes, you probably won't want a B-Class. But buying preferences are rarely as cut and dried as that. Few families demand ultimate sporting focus from a car of this kind. But the designated driving parent might well hope for an experience a little more interesting than that delivered by a typical five-seat people mover. One of those models might be a little more versatile than a B-Class, but in compensation, this Mercedes serves up a completely different level of cabin quality and technology than you'll be expecting to find from this class of car. You will pay for that, of course, but at least you'll get quite a lot of the extra premium back at resale time. And in the meantime, you'll have enjoyed a very Mercedes-style perspective on compact family motoring. By a typical five In summary, people. the Stuttgart maker has at last One found a way to make its compact contenders feel worthy the of their three-pointed star Mercedes branding. And the result is the model that this third-generation B-Class should nine. always have been, be a car that nobody but Mercedes You're could have built. Compact contenders feel worthy of their three-pointed star branding. And the result is the model that this third-generation B-Class should always have been. A car that nobody but Mercedes could have built.